Hello, this video will review the basics of creating a D2L quiz. We'll talk specifically about how to build a quiz directly into D2L. We're not going to cover how to use third-party tools like Respondus in this particular video. We also won't be covering the question pools and random sections part of building a D2L quiz. Um, that will be covered in another video because it is a little bit more complex. Before we jump directly into the demo of building the quiz, I wanted to walk you through a couple of screenshots of what the different pieces of the quiz building tool looks like. So you see there's kind of different sections and you want to think of them as such because if you just look at it, you know, holistically it can be a little overwhelming. The first section is going to be on the left panel. This is where you're going to name the quiz, where you're going to associate it to the D2L gradebook. You do want to make sure to do that so the grades will be pushed over. This is where you can add a due date. That is actually optional because in another section you're going to add your start and end date, which is what open and close the quiz. The due date is considered a light um, close date. It doesn't actually shut the quiz down for them, um, so that's why that is considered optional. And then in the bottom part of this section is where you put in your quiz. Uh, your quiz questions themselves from the question library. Um, you can either pull them in from the question library or you can build them directly into D2L. The first section on the right side is the availability section. This is where you do put in the start and end date, which will be important for the quiz window. So this will be the first time they can start taking it up until the last time. So say that the quiz opens from Monday to Wednesday, I can take it any time between Monday and Wednesday. So Monday would be my start, Wednesday would be my end. This is also where you can add in release conditions. That is actually optional depending on if you want the student to have to do something before they can do something something else. So they must open this file before they can take the quiz. And again, that is an optional setting. This is also where you add in special access. Um, this is often done for ADA purposes to give students their extra timing. Um, if they miss an assignment or miss a quiz and you need to allow them to make it up and or do it early, this is how you would give them that special access without changing the main dates for the entire class. This is also where you would add a password into the quiz. In most cases, if students are taking the quiz at um, at home during a time window, there isn't need a need for a password. Usually only a password is put into place if they're going to be proc uh, being proctored with this, either on campus or being a proctoring solution. The next section has to deal with the timing of the quiz. This is where you put in the time limit for how long the student has to take once the exam is opened. So it may be that the quiz is open from Monday to Wednesday, but as soon as they open it, they have 60 minutes to take it, um, despite what day they open it. That is where you would put that information in. You'll also determine how many questions this uh, are going to be displayed per page. It could be that all the questions are on one page or that one, there is one question per page there. This is also where you can turn on the shuffling of questions. This is highly recommended if you're not using a question pool. And this is uh, will give the students uh, the questions in a different order. So your number three may be my number one, maybe somebody else's number ten. Also, this is where you would add in the restriction of um, not having the D2L email available during the exam so students are not able to email each other back and forth. Under the attempts and completion tab, mainly you're just going to be putting in the number of attempts allowed for this quiz. In most cases, uh, most professors allow one attempt. It could be that you allow for multiple ones and um, it takes the average of those attempts, it takes the highest of those attempts, it takes the first or the last of those attempts, um, and you can determine what those settings are going to be under the attempts and completion section. Lastly, there are some important pieces in the evaluation and feedback section. First, there are two buttons that you do need to select to have the grade auto-publish into the D2L gradebook to make sure that the grades auto-push over. Then there's also going to be a section where you determine what um, the students are going to be able to see after they submitted the exam. So it may be that they see their grade immediately. It may be that they see the questions they missed. It may be that they see their grade immediately and there's an additional um, set, uh, there's additional um, release that allows them to see the questions that they miss after the exam has completed. Now let's demo creating a quiz. We'll go to the quizzes area and we'll choose to create a new quiz. We'll start in this section on the left panel. So first of all we'll just give it a title and then I need to associate it to the D2L gradebook. 
So I have some options here. I can choose to not put it in the D12 gradebook, which means it won't be associated to a grade item. That would be in the case of I want the students to take the quiz maybe for practice, but I don't ever want a grade to come over to the D12 gradebook. The other one is to edit or attach to an existing gradebook link. So this would be in the case of I've already set up my D2L gradebook and I've created a chapter two quiz grade item and I just want to link them or connect them. So when I choose that, I'll be able to um, choose the grade item that is created for that already. We see that there isn't one. Um, and so in that case, I wouldn't actually use this particular um, option. But had I had already created one of these, I would just click it and then associate this grade item to this particular um, quiz. However, in this case, I want I haven't created a grade item in the detail grade book, so I want to add a new grade item. So I'll say add to grade book. And what will happen here is in the D2L gradebook, it will automatically create me the grade item and link it to this particular quiz named Chapter 2 Quiz. Now I want to fill in the grade out of, so the highest grade I can make on that quiz. So we'll just say 10 points. You can have it anywhere from 1 point um, or beyond. It can, um, a lot of people make them out of 100 points, but you don't have to. So now we see that it's out of 10 points. It is in the D2L grade book. Now I can put in a due date if I want. And remember, this is a soft due date, so it's not going to stop them at any point. Um, the end date is what actually causes the quiz to become invisible for them so that they cannot see or submit to it after the fact. So this is a soft deadline. So say in the case that I chose it, uh, the quiz to be due on the 26th, but I didn't make it due or end until the 28th. If they submitted it on the 27th, it would still allow them to submit. It would just uh, it would just tell me that it was one day late. So in this case, I'm not going to put in a due date because later on I'm going to put in a start and end date. I can put in a, des a description here. This is just some extra information on the main page before they start the quiz. So I may say this covers chapter two content if maybe this covered more than one um, more than one chapter I might put in what chapters it covers I might put in something like um, however many questions there are how long they have to take it any type of information that might be beneficial to the students I can type in that description box now let's add in our questions. So in this case, we're going to create some, uh, create new, and we're going to create new questions. So these are the different types of questions that you can not create. Notice that you can also create question pools. We're not going to talk about that in this video, but question pools allow you to um, have a bank of questions and it pulls randomly a certain amount. So I could have 50 questions total and it randomly pulls 25 out of those 50 so that each student is getting a different 25 in a different order. Um, in this case, we're not going to set that up though. We're just going to build in questions and everybody's going to get these exact same questions. So we'll choose new questions. Some of these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, we'll start out with a multiple choice, however. This is what a multiple choice question would look like. Um, we have the text, the answer choices, we have the correct answer choice marked, and then over here on the side we can see what it looks like for a student. Down here we can choose to randomize answer order, meaning that you know the first option might be Wednesday for me, it might be Monday for you, it might be Thursday for someone else. So it's randomizing the order of the um, answer options. Here I can also determine the number of points available for this particular question. Also at the top here I can add in some more uh, some more information. So I can add in feedback here. With this feedback, if you allow them to see the questions that they missed at the end of the semester or at the end of the quiz, they'll also be able to see their feedback. So if they answered Monday, they would get this specific feedback. If they answered Tuesday, they would get this specific feedback. So in this case, you're um, detailing exactly what they're getting based upon the answer choice that they selected. You don't have to include one for every single answer choice. It may be that down here at the bottom, you just want to give some overall feedback. What you can also do is add in a hint so they can choose that as the option when they are um, answering the question. To help them in answering the question. 
So then I can just save a new and continue on with adding in my questions. Notice I can choose different question options here. True false works very similar uh, to multiple choice. You basically just add in your question and then your answer choices and mark your correct answer. Fill in the blank where it's a little bit different. With the fill in the blank, you are able to, it is auto graded, meaning that D2L will automatically grade it for you. You just have to make sure to put in the answer options that are acceptable. So here's an example of how one might look. So in the first text box, we're going to type the first part of the question before the blank. So in this case, we'll say the name of the college is, and then we would have our blank. So I'll put in what is going to be acceptable here as the answer. Now it may be that I'll accept more than just this answer. So I can add an additional answer, and then maybe I'll accept this one too or maybe I'll accept something else. So you do want to uh, put in all the acceptable answers so that D2O will grade it based upon that. Now, if the student happens to put in something other than this and it's marked incorrectly by D2O, you can always overwrite it. So what I also want to make sure to do here is make sure that the weight is 100%, which means that this is 100% of a correct answer. So each answer choice will be 100%. They'll only be required to put in one of these. Then in text box two, since this is kind of the end of my sentence, I would just put a period here. In some cases, depending on how I might format this, I might say something like, Gordon blank college is the name of this college and then the the student would have to fill in state in that case I would have text before and text after um, of the fill in the blank question at the bottom I can add in that question feedback and have it built in but this one I really do like to preview to make sure that it is formatting as I want so in this case this is what the student would see the name of the college is blank and then as long as they put in Gordon State College Gordon or Gordon State it would be counted as acceptable so we'll save and new Here's another fill in the blank question that shows kind of text before and after the blank. So in this case, we would have the primary colors are red. The student would fill in blue. We want to make that 100% correct. There wouldn't be any other additional answers I could add here. And yellow. So I can preview that and make sure that the text is lining up correctly. And then again, the student is asked to put in the word blue. Here I can uh, change the amount of point value that is allotted for this particular um, question and then I could continue to save in new. A multi-select question is very similar to a multiple choice question but there is more than one correct answer. You may want to add into the question select all that apply or something of that nature because if not the student might not necessarily know that there's more than one correct answer that they need to select. Then you would select all the ones that are correct then you want to choose how these uh, this question is going to be graded. So all or nothing means they have to get it exactly correct. No um, extras that are incorrect. They have to uh, choose all the correct ones. They have to get it right on the money. Um, you can choose correct selections, which means that it's only going to count the ones that they um, earned that they got correct. Um, and then you can also choose the right minus wrong, which is going to take into account the ones that they got correct, and then subtract that off of the ones that they might have selected that were incorrect. With a matching question, you want to first add in the question text, which is usually going to be something like match these two things, whatever you're matching up. In this case, we're matching the school to the particular mascot. Then you want to choose how it's going to be graded, right minus wrong, meaning that you know they're getting credit for the ones that they answered correctly minus the ones that they answered incorrectly, or all or nothing, meaning everything has to be exactly correct. Then the first set of answer choices is going to be one side of the match. So in this case, we'll do um, the mascots. So I'll list each of the mascots here. I can add in additional choices here to add in more options. Then below, I'm going to add in the matches to those. It's easy if you do them in the correct order. So Highlanders is number one. So Gordon will be number one. Bulldogs is number two. So UGA will be number two. That way you don't have to change these um, numbers because you're putting them in the correct order anyways. Um, and D2L will randomize it for you. What's great is always to preview this so you can kind of see what it's going to look like for the students. This is going to be the answer key. And then the students would just come in and match them up as, as so. 
With ordering, you're also going to choose what type of grading method you want. And then over under the value section, which is going to be on the left side, you're going to list the uh, correct answers in the order that they go in. So in this case, if we're doing putting words in alphabetical order, which is what I listed as the question text here, I'm going to list them already in correct alphabetical order. That way I don't have to change any of these numbers. I don't have to add in any feedback if I want. That was something that you know we did discuss earlier. If you want them to get certain feedback based upon their um, particular answer choice that they put in, you could add that there. Again, this is also a great one to preview just to make sure that things are going in order the students would then just select the um, number correlating to the order in which these should be arranged lastly we have the written response so this is the one that you would probably choose if you're going to do an essay question it is not auto graded by this uh, by the by d2l so you would have to grade it yourself um, there is a, a question type called short answer and that one is um, still requiring this the student to put something in or to find something exactly correct so kind of like a long fill in the blank and is usually not recommended so here we'll put in the question text or the prompt that they're supposed to to answer then they'll just have a regular block here to type in their response by default they'll just have spell check here you can turn on the HTML editor and the ability to add attachments if they maybe will need to add an attachment to their response or if maybe they would need to insert stuff to be able to add in um, pictures or to record a video now that your answer choices have been added in, you can choose to preview the quiz, which would let you see all the questions um, as they are going to be uh, viewed by the student. If you need to edit one, you can always click on it and then do your edits. If you want to delete it, you can always choose it and then delete it. Now let's look at the right panel, which are some of the other settings that we would want to um, put in place for our quiz. So under availability and dates, this is where you're going to put the start and end date. This is when the quiz is going to be open for the first time for them to be able to take. And then the last time in which they can open it. This is different than the due date. And in most cases, you would want to make sure to have an end date. You may or may not have a due date. A due date is a soft deadline. So even if they uh, miss the due date, but it hasn't reached the end date yet, they can still actually submit. So say that they submit on the um, early morning of the 28th, it will just tell them it's a day late, but it will let them submit up into the end date. Sometimes that can be confusing to students. So sometimes the teacher um, will actually just not have a due date and only have the end date. Then you have the release conditions where you can have a student, um, you know, they must look at this or open this or do this before they can take the quiz. They must take, you know, this quiz before they can take this one. They must open this file before they can view um, or take this quiz. Um, that is more of an advanced feature, so we won't cover it, but that is where that is going to be um, available. Then you have your managing your special access, which is where um, you may need to give a separate date window or a separate time limit for certain students, especially in cases of ADA where the student is going to get a longer time period or in cases where the student has missed the quiz or needs to take the quiz early. So in this case, you would choose your manage access. You would allow the, uh, the user special access to the quiz and then they would be able to, you'd be able to put in a special time limit or a special date range and then and choose the student to give them that particular special access. You also have the ability to put in a password. This is only used when um, the students are going to be doing a proctored exam either via a technology source or testing on campus. If they're just going to have an open window to where they take it by a certain date, there's really no need for a password. Looking at timing and display, this is where you would put in the time limit. Once they open the quiz, how long do they have to submit the quiz? So we'll choose manage timing. By default, there isn't a time limit, but in this case, I do want to enforce one. I would put in how long they have to take it and maybe one minute of grace period just to give them that full 60 minutes and one more minute to press, you know, submit. And then very important here is what happens after this time period um, has exceeded. By default, it's just going to let them continue working and they can take as long as they want um, and it will still grade it as if they, um, you know, only took the allotted amount of time. It will tell you it is late, but it doesn't um, 
put any penalty on the student. So in most cases, you want to change that, that to the second option, which is prevent the student from making further changes, which means after that 61 minutes, it freezes their exam and it's not going to accept any changes. They have to submit it. So that's usually what you want to have in most cases. Next, we have our paging options. By default, it's going to be all pages displayed together. Um, what we encourage is one question per page, um, which means that they only uh, are going to see one question per page. They are able to move backwards and forwards, though, so they're able to skip through pages or return to pages unless you check this button. If you check this button, it makes them move forward only, and they're only getting one question per page. If you're doing questions that are not in a question pool or a random section, we do encourage you to shuffle questions, which means your number one may be my number three, maybe somebody else's number 10. Then down here under display, we do um, suggest you leave disable email instant messages and alerts for the, within Brightspace on during the time that they're taking the quiz. That means that they won't be able to send or receive D2O emails during that process. If you did build in hints in your questions, you could check to allowed hints. Moving down now, we have to have the attempts in completion. This is where you're determining how many attempts they have on that quiz. So in most cases, it's just going to be one attempt, but you can have it to where maybe they take three attempts and you take the average of those attempts or you take the highest of those attempts. Or it could be that they have an unlimited amount of attempts and you take their first attempt in the case of they take the quiz once, that's the grade that goes into the D2 grade book, but then they can take it an unlimited amount of times after that. Then we have evaluation and feedback. This is very important for making sure that the grades push into the D12 grade book. So earlier up here at the top, we made sure that we associated it to a grade item. So that was the first step. The second step uh, in terms of pushing it to the grade book is under evaluation and feedback, make sure these two buttons are checked to auto publish and to synchronize the grade book. That's going to make sure that those grades push correctly over to the D12 grade book. This last section here is to explain and to ha let you have some options as to what happens when the student submits their quiz. So once they submit it, are they able to see their grade immediately? And no questions. So they just see, the qu uh, they just see their grade and no um, additional questions. You could change it to where they're able to see the incorrect questions only with those correct answers or the incorrect uh, questions only without the correct answers marked. It might be that you just want them to see their grade and then you want to customize quiz results to be able to add in an additional view. So this is the primary view or the default view. If I edit that, um, just by default, it's going to say, hey, you've submitted your quiz. You can add in additional text here if you want. And then it's just going to display the grade for them. And I have it uh, selected to not show any questions. I can choose to let them see their the class average if I want to, though. Now I'm going to add an additional view. So then you would want to choose the date when this additional view comes into effect. So oftentimes I like to do it maybe the day after or you know the time after the quiz is due so that everybody submitted their quiz. Now they can go in and see the questions that they've missed. Then I might put a question, uh, message here saying, you know, these are the questions you missed. and then choose to display the grade. And then in this case, this is where I could um, show uh, incorrect questions with only the responses and then choose to show the correct answers or not. I would then choose to create that additional view and I'll see it here. So now we can check to see that we have a primary view, which is the default view, what they see immediately upon submission. And then that additional view that shows up after this particular date. And this is what we have set up for that. And again, we can see that right here within the editing area of seeing the overall um, initial submission and then our additional view. So now the last step that we need to do before saving all of our quiz settings and questions is we want to change the visibility here. By default, it's going to be invisible when you start to create a quiz and that just kind of helps you with if it takes you a little while to build the quiz, your students don't see it kind of midway in progress. So we're going to flip it to being visible and then we're going to save and close. 
At that point, we'll be able to see that the quiz is completely set up in the quizzes area. We see that it has the availability on it, and then if we hover over this, we see that it is correctly associated to a grade item. Lastly, if I need to make any additional edits, I can come here and choose Edit and go right back into the editing mode, paying very close attention to the different sections.